All right, so let's get right into it. We have the micro chart for the NASDAQ. You can see I have London open, which is 2 to 5 a.m., shaded blue. The yellow shaded area is New York open, 7 to 9 a.m. Pink shaded area is the a.m. session, 9.30 to 11.30. And then we have the green shaded area, which is the p.m. session, 1.30 to around 3.45. So you can see with these execution arrows, I tried to go short in the NASDAQ during the PM session. I was looking for a run into this imbalance and potentially these lows for a full-time reversal in the PM session. But as you guys can see, that didn't happen. I ended up taking a loss. So let's get into why this trade was a losing trade. So the reason why I wanted to take this trade is we have this high right here at 130. And then we had this high at 205. So we failed to take this high out on the NASDAQ. But if I go to the E-mini S&P chart, you can see that we made a higher high at 205, taking out the 130 high. So I saw a potential SMT divergent. So I wanted to go short in the NASDAQ. So I went short, ended up taking a loss. So, <clears throat> so once that SMT divergence happened, I saw confirmation on the lower time frame that made me want to enter the short and let's get into that right now. So now we're looking at the one minute chart for NASDAQ. You can see we failed to make that higher high. Then we had this big displacement lower and we created a bearish breaker right here. Let me change the settings on that. So we created a bearish breaker because we took out this low right here. Then we went high higher to take out this high. And then we went lower again to take out the low creating a bearish breaker. And then we had the bearish breaker lined up with a fair value gap that was in a premium. So if I draw from this high to this low, and the reason why I'm picking this high and not this high is because we took out this high, but the bodies never went above this high. So if you look at the bodies of the candles right here, it never went above the high. So I'm going to pick this high to draw my fib from. So measuring from that high to this low, we have equilibrium, the black dotted line, and then we have optimal trade entry. Let me make that a little bit thicker for you guys. So right here, the black dotted line is equilibrium, and then we have optimal trade entry here. So you can see that equilibrium doesn't line up with any type of balanced price range. What is a balanced price range? Basically, you want to see a failed imbalance, so like a volume imbalance or a fair value gap lined up with this fair value gap. That would be a balanced price range. So my entry is going to come at optimal trade entry right here. So I'm entering right here at optimal trade entry. My stop loss was right at the high. And then my target was a two for one. So clearly this was a losing trade. So why was this a losing trade? Well, in order to know that we have to go back to the five minute chart. So I'm going to erase this breaker real quick. So when we have this displacement here that we saw on the one minute chart, that's being represented here with this down close candle on the five minute chart, we're trading into this fair value gap and we fell just short of this fair value gap. So let me draw that out. So we're trading into this fair value gap and yes, the body's closed out of it. So normally you would think, okay, that's a sign that we're probably going to continue lower, right? Well, that's what I was thinking when I was looking at it in real time, but ho however, I forgot to notice that we had a bullish breaker here. So if I zoom in, you can see that we took out this high right here. We took out this high. Then we ran to take out sell side right here. So we took out the high, took out sell side, then traded higher. So that is a bullish breaker. But you might be thinking there's no up close candle within this swing high. Yes, that's on the five minute chart. So when this happens, we have to drop down to a lower time frame to find that up close candle to make sure that we know exactly where the breaker is forming at. So if we drop down to a one minute chart, so now I'm on the one minute chart and now those up close candles is more easy to identify rather than on the five minute chart. So we took out the high, took out sell side, then went higher. So the up close candles that we're focusing on is right here. This is your bullish breaker. So if I extend that out all the way in time, you can see that this, this, this displacement lower never traded outside the breaker. If we were truly going to be bearish, it should have closed outside the breaker, then retraced up to optimal trade entry, then continued lower. 
But sometimes you make mistakes in trading, and I did not see this at the time. I was just focusing on the fair value gap. I saw that we closed out of it on the five minute chart. So I was like, oh, bet, let's enter this short. So that is the number one reason why this trade was a losing trade. For my model, when we are in a situation where there is SMT divergence, but we're trading into an imposing fair value gap breaker, I must see price close through the breaker. I don't necessarily care about the fair value gap, but I care about price closing through the breaker on the one minute chart for this scalping model. So basically I'm looking for a SMT divergence on a five minute chart. However, if we're trading into an imposing five minute chart breaker with a fair value gap, then price must close through the fair value gap when refined on a one minute chart. It might sound like a lot, but I'm gonna run through it again. So if I go back to the five minute chart, we have the five minute SMT. However, we're trading into an opposing fair value gap lined up with a breaker on the five minute chart. We must see price close through that breaker when refined on a one minute chart. So it doesn't need to close through the five minute breaker. It must close through the breaker refined on the one minute chart. So when we go back to the one minute chart, we refine the breaker to the up close candles on the one minute chart. And you can clearly see that price does not close through the breaker on the one minute chart. So when that happens, the trade idea is no longer valid and we must wait to see if price is either gonna create a new SMT divergence or a trade through the breaker and then come back up to a premium fair value gap in this case. Now, also, if we go back to the five minute chart, you can see, let me delete this breaker real quick in these lines. So we have this fair value gap, right? And price does close outside the bottom end of the fair value gap, right? However, with fair value gaps, you want to measure the wicks of the two candles that make it. So don't look at the third candle that makes the fair value gap. Look at the first two candles measure the wicks so for in this case we have the high here and then we have the low of this candle here so i'm going to measure from this high to this low and i'm going to find the middle point of that let me make it thicker so the middle point is right here 17 8, 9, 2, and a quarter you notice how price never closes through that that's another indication with the breaker that this is just a failed run lower and that we're probably not going to continue lower and you don't want to enter the trade so we have two reasons of why this trade was a losing trade i'm just going to recap it real quick we have the five minute breaker refined on a one minute chart that price never closed through and then we have the middle point of the first two candles of the fair value gap of the wicks that price also did not close through so with those two things happening then this trade idea, even though we have SMT divergence, is no longer valid. It's probably going to either consolidate or just completely go against you and stop you out. So that is why this trade was a loss. And so that's why this trade was a loss. I hope you guys found this insightful and I'll continue to post more content like this for you guys in the future. Thank you.